like biopicture uh, it uh, is the it's a profession now I had to invent it because they took my architect's license so they couldn't take my license from me uh, it's achieving sustenance through encounter of earth phenomena uh, that's the uh, that's the definition of it, at least. And uh, sustenance, of course, is sustenance for people. Um, we have taken that, well, we've been playing with it for 40 years, but uh, we're taking it to uh, a more intense level these days because uh, the, the, the planet is changing rapidly and uh, we've got to take care of people, basically, uh, without destroying the planet. And, Obviously, some of our methods are not working too well. Uh, Japan is the most recent case in point. Uh, so, when you're encountering Earth phenomena, of course, you've got to know what Earth phenomena is. Wind, sun, rain, gravity, condensation, thermal mass, lightning, rainbows. Uh, all aspects of biology and physics. People ask me uh, a lot if I, if I can uh, recommend courses for architectural students to take, and I say uh, uh, biology and physics, I would say forget about the architectural courses <laughs> and take the <laughs> biology and physics first. Uh, because uh, the, the way architecture is going these days, uh, it's not necessarily uh, dealing with the situation that we have on the planet. Uh, so, the buildings I'm going to show you are uh, uh, examples of what these earthships can look like. Uh, the, the, the buildings, we, we call them earthships uh, because we didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to be called houses because houses have a preconceived idea of what they are. These things for the future have to be vessels that will, uh, what I say, sail on the seas of tomorrow. And so, the point with them, uh, I'll show you a lot of pictures of them, but uh, a point with them is that, uh, that I'm bringing out with these is that the native peoples and the, and the plants and the animals, uh, they've existed on this world, on this earth for centuries, and they really haven't had a significant effect on the earth's ability to support uh, humans. Uh, so the, these creatures have, uh, have been okay for quite a while. Uh, they have encountered uh, the earth phenomena for their sustenance. We humans, we try to recreate the sun and all kinds of other things. We don't have the humility to just encounter what is here already. These creatures, these native peoples and animals and, and plants, uh, they didn't have what we call an economy. Uh, they also didn't have garbage. So modern developed peoples have, uh, they've only been around for a couple of hundred years and they've already had a significant effect on the Earth's ability to support humans. And again, the buildings I'm showing you are a little dark. But, uh, <laughs> uh, they are, uh, I wonder why that is darker than uh, are there any adjustments up here for anybody know about adjustments on this thing? Uh, the uh, hmm. uh, yeah, there are adjustments here. <laughs> I, could, I could do more harm than good. Uh, the uh, the buildings that are in these pictures are examples that show just the many different ways these these earthships can look. Uh, these people that have been here, humans, for a couple hundred years, they have what we call an economy. And they have what we call garbage. And so the conclusion I'm coming to are, are is economy and garbage, are they the ingredients that have caused modern humans to adversely affect the Earth's ability to support human life? Uh, and that might just be the answer. Uh, the modern world has a system to support an economy. And uh, this economy is supposed to support the people. 
and it doesn't. Uh, a, a greater world, in my opinion, would have a system to sustain people, and uh, the sustenance of people would sustain an economy. And that's, that's just turning it inside out, but it is uh, something that we're trying. In other words, the earth ship then, this sustainable building we're working on, is a, a vessel to try to achieve this, to try to achieve the sustenance of people all over the world in any climate. Uh, so real economy is not the means, it's not the result, but it's the means of sustaining people. Uh, real economy is the result of sustaining people, it's not the means. And this building is uh, another uh, example of airships in Jamaica uh, using the uh, the materials that are indigenous to all over Jamaica, bottles and tires and cans. <laughs> I mean, Jamaica is a uh, Jamaica is a uh, tourist place, and people go there to totally, you know, get drunk and have fun, and they have mountains and mountains of bottles there. And so, Jamaica manufactures bottles. <laughs> um, so, obviously, this is a night shot. <laughs> The modern world of the economy produces garbage. Uh, a greater world based on sustenance for people would transform and consume garbage. Uh, so in my opinion, garbage is the result of the economy. Uh, and it, there, are a lot of, there are movies out on that too, uh, just that, that we, we keep manufacturing things that fall apart so that we can create jobs to keep the economy strong and uh, so that we can make more products and have more products fall apart. Uh, so what I'm saying is, and again, the buildings that I'm showing you are uh, illustrative of this all over the world, but sustain the people and you'll transcend economy. Uh, and so again, people become first. The money and economy is second. Uh, so. Transcend the economy and you'll transform or eliminate even the concept of garbage. Uh, garbage, again, is a result of, of uh, just, there's not time to, uh, if, if it takes time, that means money. And so a lot of people tell me, uh, you know, some of the things we do in these buildings is not economical because it takes too much time. And uh, so, so that's why some of the buildings look like the way they do around this planet. Uh, there's not time. Time is money. You can't eat money. I've said uh, I've traveled a lot uh, in the last few months, and at one point I had uh, I had Australian money, Chinese money, Haitian money, Canadian money, and American money in my pocket all at one time, and I couldn't eat any of it. <laughs> uh, so sustenance for people. Uh, that's what we're after with these buildings. This is a this is a building that just it's in a frigid area of New Mexico, and it's uh, this is all food production and sewage treatment. Uh, you provide comfortable shelter, water, electricity, food, sanitation for all people, uh, all over the earth, for any budget, for any race. Uh, that's that's the whole effort of of. Uh, by biotexture and earthships, uh, and because we think that if, if we sustain people, an economy, what I'm calling an insignificant economy, will grow out of that. So I'm saying we need to transcend the economy, and the earthships that you're seeing these pictures of inside and out, all are buildings that are 90 to 100 percent sustainable, that means they use no fossil fuels, that means they're uh, producing their own water, their own power, uh, handling their own sewage, heating and cooling themselves in any different climate, many different climates, and uh, the total utility bill, annual total utility bill of one of these buildings would be something like $100 a year to handle all of your utilities. So, uh, and most of them are zero. 
uh, we have to deal with some of the real world things for people. Uh, and so they do have a little bit of a utility bill. So I'm saying transcend the economy and transform garbage. Again, this is Negril, Jamaica. Uh, this Negril, Jamaica is just a gold mine for, uh, for bottles and uh, cans and uh, the result of people boozing it for their holiday. <laughs> there is some good in alcohol. Uh, so you end up with a life. That's that's kind of what the whole thing is about. We, we're trying to have a life. Most people in the developed world that are even wealthy, you know, uh, uh, are, if they, if they quit working, they don't have a life. And basically, if they, they don't have a life because they're working too much. Most of the people in the United States are uh, two, two family, I mean, a family has two people working and nobody home. And they have a real nice home with a bunch of utilities and, and thousands of dollars a month for utility bills. And uh, they don't have it there because they're working. And so we're, we're, it's all about economy. It's all about economy. So we're, just, we're trying to transcend economy. We're trying to provide a sustenance for people uh, beyond economy uh, and in front of economy. And, of course, in a way that is logically... Uh, encountering the phenomena of the planet rather than these arrogant methods of trying to recreate the sun in a nuclear power plant when it's right there in the sky and it's free. So the model creature for the earth, to me, is a tree. Uh, the tree's what we would call garbage. Uh, leaves and twigs drop down to the ground and uh, create new soil to make new life, to make new trees. The tree has pipes, roots, that go down into the ground and suck up water. It puts out oxygen. The animals like it. They put out CO2. Tree, too. The tree likes that. <laughs> the leaves of the tree are just like photovoltaic uh, electric panels. It's photosynthesis. It's the same, same difference. And uh, so the tree is really the model, the ideal uh, creature uh, for this earth. And uh, if we modeled our things off of the tree, which we're doing with the Earthship, I think we'd be a lot better off. Uh, the buildings are doing the same thing as the tree. Uh, they can look strange or they can look fairly conventional. I like strange. Uh, <laughs> but inside, you know, they, they, we have this, uh, this thing uh, with people... Uh, they are, they're used to a certain look. And, and I mean, I, I actually think that if uh, people are so wrapped up in what things look like, uh, that if you were in the North Atlantic Sea and, and somebody was out there drowning and freezing to death, uh, and you threw them a life preserver, life preservers are always white. If you threw them a green life preserver, they'd probably reject it. It's the wrong color. <laughs> And so these are more interior shots of these buildings that we call earthships. So it comes down to decentralization for housing equals utilities. These buildings are a machine. They are a machine that encounters the phenomena of the earth to give you heating and cooling, shelter, uh, uh, water, power, sewage treatment, and food. And these are really the things that every city, every government, every country is trying to deal with, you know, with parliaments and, and uh, legislators and uh, all trying to figure out, you know, the righteous way for us to proceed uh, uh, relative to an economy, relative to politics, and so on and so on. We're just saying, let's give it all back to the people. Let the people have a vessel that takes care of them. Let them do it. Uh, let them understand it, and, uh, you know, that's freedom. So that has led us to these six issues uh, that we want to deal with for people uh, all over the world. So it's building with natural and recycled materials, water harvesting, contained sewage treatment on site, thermal, solar, heating and cooling, it's just physics, this is just biology. Food production, 
solar wind and electricity, all a blend of, of and our physics and our biology, uh, the courses of uh, the future. Uh, so the first one, building with natural and recycled materials, there's no difference. Uh, if you came here from another planet, you'd see a whole lot of trees in some places, and you'd see a whole lot of tires in other places. And you'd say, you know, well, this planet produces trees, it produces tires. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, people get, they say, well, you know, people say trees are natural and tires aren't. Well, it, it's like uh, you've got to define natural. Tires are natural to this planet. They are indigenous to the whole planet. There they are, tires. Every they grow here, <laughs> and you might think that I'm lying, but this is in California. This is if you came here from another planet and saw this, I mean, you gotta, you gotta just go, whoa, you know. Uh, I look at this and I lust because I'm seeing a city. <laughs> And so we beat the dirt into the tires, and uh, they're encased in steel belted rubber. They're laid like bricks. They're super resilient, like I say, indigenous to the entire planet. It doesn't take much skill to do it. Uh, the wall is already wider than its required foundation, so it's a monolith wall. Uh, termites can't eat them, they don't rot. I mean, tell me something bad about it. <laughs> so what, the way you do it is uh, we lay them. Uh, you can't. You don't want to really move them after you've pounded 400 pounds of dirt into them. So you, you put the dirt in and stuff it in, and then you beat it in. They swell up, and you got a giant brick that is resilient to earthquakes and uh, and everything else, really. So it becomes a, a skill. And we have tire pounders, and, uh, and they use the regular tools, just like uh, uh, regular masons would use. And uh, we make buildings out of it. Um, there's a tire wall. And the thing is, other than structure, this is fantastic structure. There's been a lot of tests on it and everything. Uh, weight tests and bearing tests and so on. And, and uh, other than that, it's thermal mass. I mean... Uh, I won't go too far into thermal mass, but uh, it is mass holds temperature. So we're making a wall that's not only structure, it's a, it's a battery to hold temperature. Cool temperature because of physics goes, I mean warm temperature because of physics goes to the cooler place, which would be into your walls. Well then when your airspace in here gets cool, it leaks back out of the walls. And it's like turning on a, a heater. So we stuff the tires uh, the voids between them with uh, mud and cans and keep doing it until finally we're plastering the wall. It looks like a normal wall. And that's the entire wall. So that's what we call garbage. Uh, and so, you know, how, how is a tire garbage and a leaf not? I mean, it depends on how you perceive it. You, you, you know, you could say the sun is bad if you're in the desert and you've got no water and it's killing you. Or if you're in northern Canada and you've built a little straw hovel facing south and the sun's coming in and keeping you warm, you could call it good. It's, it's up to you how you perceive everything. Whether you call it bad or good, whether you call it garbage or natural, whether you call it global warming or just change, whatever. You, it, it's really up to you to figure out how to live on this planet. You know, that's, that's all there is to it. And, you know, I've been all over the world in the last few months, and uh, I'm seeing people arguing over whether it's people or natural causes that are causing the planet to warm up, or if it's warming up at all. They're arguing over all this stuff. It's like, you know, and what it seems to me is like we're standing on a, on a rock, and it's heating up and turning into hot lava, and our shoes are burning off of our feet. <laughs> And we're standing here arguing over which way to go and whose fault it is. <laughs> I mean, it's like nuts what I see on this planet. There's a future tire pounder. <laughs> and so we're still talking about the 
recycled materials, natural materials, so their cans, their bottles, their tires. We build buildings out of them. Uh, we're finding and gathering these things. Another point with this is that uh, it takes a lot. I was in Norway, and they got a fantastic recycling uh, plant where they gather up all the materials in diesel trucks. They haul them to this plant. They got multi-million dollar uh, apparatus to conveyor belts and processing all the cans and processing all the bottles and, and uh, the tires and everything. And then they package them all up and ship them somewhere. And so there's a giant amount of energy, giant carbon footprint in what we call recycling. What we're talking about doing is going out on the street and gathering your building materials and building a house. <laughs> like a bird building a nest. So these are construction materials. Yes, they are uncertified construction materials by all means. I'm not much into certification. Uh, uh, Bonaire in the Caribbean. Uh, they're another vacation island. This is a mountain of bottles. So we're, you know, everywhere I go, they take me to the dump. <laughs> <laughs> to entertain me. <laughs> so we take these bottles, and we cut the necks off with a tile saw, tape them together to make these bricks, and if you drink a lot of Sky Vodka, you have a pretty house. <laughs> And it doesn't take much skill to lay these bricks. And it doesn't take much skill to make them. In fact, in, in the Grill Jamaica, we, we started a business. We were paying people at the dump with their cow saws to make these bricks. Uh, and they were making them and selling them. So these are just the, the way these things look. And they're, again, done with regular tools. Doesn't take long to learn to do it. That's an intern who who just learned to do it. So it can be it can be whatever, it depends on how much uh, of an artist you are. I mean, you can take that brick wall and make it look foolish, or make it look, you know, real nice and crispy like that. Uh, or you can take bottles and make them look like that, or you can make them, the thing is with some of these products that we call garbage is, it's a lot easier to make them look good. And even if you, even if you do it real organic, it still looks good. Again, another favorite product, plastic bottles. You know, I mean, very rarely do people see this many plastic bottles, but we know they're there. Or, and the same with tires and the same with glass bottles. We just don't seem to see how much we have there. They say that there's a, uh, in the Pacific Ocean, I think, there's a thing floating around of plastic about the size of Texas. Uh, and so, you know, we'll go out there and mine it one of these days, I suppose. Uh, but we take the plastic bottles, we do the same thing. We make bricks and uh, use them. So there's, there's three of the products that this world produces that are, I call, natural products. There's the plastic bottles and the glass <coughs> bottles. And another favorite one is, uh, these are panels from... Washing, machine, uh, washing machines and refrigerators. Every dump.